My name is Charlie and on this channel I make videos about building wealth and achieving financial freedom so that you can free up your time to focus on the things that you truly care about. So this is the eighth episode of my Road to Financial Freedom series, and this is where I document the growth of a small portfolio that I started about seven months ago, which I'm trying to grow as quickly as possible using the strategies that I talk about on this channel, like covered call writing and leaps option buying. So I started the account with a $5,000 deposit, and in addition to that, I'm also depositing $200 every single week. So the goal is basically to simulate the portfolio of someone working to achieve financial freedom starting from scratch, and to see how quickly it can actually be done. So with all that said, let's take a look at how the portfolio is doing so far. And we can see that as of the end of the day on Tuesday, July 6th, the portfolio is sitting at a total of $12,901. And that's based on a total deposited amount of $11,050. So that equates to a total gain of $1,851, which is about an 18.1% return. And that would be equal to about a 2.4% return per month or a 33.3% return per year. So we can see from my net gains chart here that the month of June was a really good month for this portfolio. And really since about the middle of May, it's been pretty strong. And of course, in this video, we'll get into more detail on why that is. And we'll start as we always do by taking a look at the premiums I brought in last month. And we can see that in June 2021, I brought in a total of $706 worth of premium, which equates to about a 4.5% return as a percentage of my portfolio. So that's sitting squarely within my goal range of about 2 to 6% per month, so I'm certainly pretty happy with that. Taking a look at my projected income tab here, this is the column where I track the premiums I bring in as a percentage of my portfolio. And we can see that the last few months it had been on the lower end, but now it's finally starting to recover. And that's really just because the underlying stocks that I'm selling covered calls on have been doing very well over the last month. So currently those stocks are ChargePoint, Corsair, and Zynga. And Corsair is actually a new one that I just entered this month. But prior to June, I had been waiting for ChargePoint to recover for quite a while. And now it's finally approaching my cost basis of around $37.50. And for those of you who have seen previous episodes, I actually had another set of 100 charge point shares at a lower cost basis that I already got called away from me. So when I got those shares called away, I actually ended up buying 100 shares of a stock called SunPower, which is ticker symbol SPWR. So on June 7th, I had bought 100 shares of SunPower at a cost of about $22.83. And then I sold a 2350 strike call, which expired on June 25th. And for that, I brought in a premium of $110. So shortly after that, some power exceeded my strike price and I ended up getting called away on that trade. So it was a pretty good quick profit for me. But instead of buying back into the shares, I decided to go with Corsair instead because SunPower didn't quite have the increasing revenue that I like to see, and Corsair seems to be in a bit of a more established, stronger position. And with the price of the stock having increased as it did, I couldn't really justify the value of it. And even though I've already been in and out of that trade since the last episode, those of you who are members on my Patreon would have found out about those trades right away. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen the updates every week. So if you're not already following me there and you want to keep updated on this portfolio, make Make sure to do that. So that's when I started to build my position in Corsair. So I started off by buying 100 shares at an average price of about $37.27. And I've already sold a couple of calls against those shares, so far bringing in a total premium of about $400 from that set. So then Corsair started to pull back a little bit over the next week or two. But seeing the strong position that the company is in with consistently increasing revenue and taking over market share from a lot of its competitors, I decided to go ahead and buy another 100 shares at an average cost of $34.87. So the first call I've sold against those shares expires July 16th at a strike price of $35. And for selling that call, I brought in a premium of $132. So Corsair is a stock that I really like right now for covered call writing, especially at the current price since it's pulled back a bit, because the premiums are still pretty high and their last earnings report was very impressive. So as long as they keep up the growth that they've been seeing, I think the stock will do very well over time. Now the last stock that I'm selling traditional covered calls on is Zynga, and currently I have an $11 strike call sold at the July 16th expiration. So by the looks of it right now, I'll likely get those shares called away from me when the expiration date rolls around. And at that point, I think I'll move away from trading Zynga just because the premiums aren't very high, and since this portfolio is growing, I'll now be able to afford some more expensive stocks that I like trading a little bit better. Now I also still have my poor man's covered call on Apple. So Apple has actually exceeded my $140 strike price, but since so much time has passed, my leaps option is down about $110. But of course I've been selling calls against it all along and brought in over $500 worth of premium doing so. So I will be profitable overall on this trade. 
Originally when I bought the Leaps, it was at a delta of 0.75. So to see a bit more success with a poor man's covered call next time, I'd buy a higher delta Leaps. The only reason I bought this one initially was because my portfolio was pretty small at the time, so I couldn't afford anything with a higher delta. But since Apple is already above my strike price with almost about two weeks left until expiration, this is my plan for what I'm gonna do with this poor man's covered call. Basically, I'll keep an eye on the delta of my Leaps option and of my short option. And once the delta of the short option exceeds the delta of the leaps, that'll tell me that it's a good time to close out that trade. Because that basically means that as Apple stock increases in value, my leaps option is growing in value slower than my short option is. So therefore it'd be beneficial to close that trade out before Apple rises any further. Now looking at my options portfolio, I'm actually now just holding one AMD leaps option. And the reason for that is because I had sold my two previous leaps and immediately replaced them with this one. So I did that because my previous leaps options were further out of the money and at a closer expiration date. So I wanted to buy this one a bit closer to at the money and further out in time just to give myself a higher delta and more time for AMD stock to recover. And sure enough, over the last few weeks, AMD has done pretty well. So it's up to almost $95 per share and this option is up about $320. Keep in mind though, my previous two options combined were down about $840. So I'm still at a total loss on these AMD leaps of a little over $500. But if AMD's next earnings report is as strong as its previous two have been, I think there's a good chance that I could be profitable pretty soon or at least close to it. Now finally, regarding my long-term holds, I haven't bought or sold anything since the last episode. So at this point, I'm up $325 on those long-term holds. So we can see that even though most of the stocks that I'm holding are down in value, of course, aside from my long-term holds, I'm still up $1,850 on this portfolio. And the main reason for that is because of all the premium I brought in. So over the lifetime of this portfolio, I brought in over $3,200 worth of premium so far. And considering that the value of this portfolio is only about 13,000, at this point, that's definitely a pretty sizable chunk. And so for those of you that have been or are still skeptical about covered call writing, hopefully you can start to see that the downsides of covered call writing, or in other words, potentially missing out on profits, are far, far outweighed by the upsides of it. Because this portfolio has only been around for a little over half a year and I've already brought in that much premium. So again, as I always say, as long as you're selling covered calls on stocks that you like for the long term and don't mind holding, there's really very little downside to covered call writing. And I still see it as by far the best and quickest way to achieve financial freedom. And seeing that I started with a pretty small portfolio, using margin also helped me to accelerate my returns and just to sell covered calls on more expensive stocks that I wouldn't otherwise be able to. So if you missed my last video where I talked about how I use margin safely, be sure to check that out in the bottom right corner of the screen. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.